Do you have AP classes in your program or any advanced classes? And if so, when do you begin to focus on the linguistic and cultural competence skills that students will need to be successful at that level? A pre-AP or any scaffolded approach to skills and content is beneficial in the language learning process, fostering critical thinking skills and mindset shifts early on. So whether students pursue a language at an advanced or AP level or not, these skills not only enhance and support academic success, but they also cultivate confidence and competence. We'll take a look at how we can begin fostering these skills early on. So let's jump in. Are you a language teacher looking for some reassurance that what you're doing in the classroom is on the right track? Or maybe you're looking for some ways to teach even more effectively. If you're one or the other or somewhere in between, you've landed in the right place. This is the World Language Classroom Podcast with your host, me, Joshua Cabral. You're about to get tips, tools, and resources so that your students continue to rise in proficiency and communicate with confidence. Let's jump in. Vamos, allons-y. Hello, my friends. Bonjour, mes amis. Hola, mis amigos. Welcome to the World Language Classroom podcast. I am Joshua Cabral, and thank you, as always, for tuning in each week to listen to what's happening in the world of language teaching and using it as an opportunity to reflect on your own teaching. It is what makes you an incredible educator. Well, there are many things that make you an incredible educator. This is just one of them. So thank you very much for this opportunity to be with you and to be a part of that process in your teaching journey. So today, I want to do what I often call starting with the end in mind. And when we look at backwards planning for any unit lesson within a year, that we start with that end point. What do we want students to be able to do? And then we plan backwards to provide them with the learning opportunities to get to that goal. So I want to look at that from taking even a further step back from that and not looking at the unit or the year, but actually an entire program. So within your language program, if you have advanced courses, and usually in the high school level, that would be a four or five level, and sometimes they're even going into the AP. And when we're looking at the skills that students need to be successful at that AP and advanced level, we sometimes think that that starts happening maybe at the level three, the level four, when they're engaging with material in that more advanced way. But I want to make the case today with our time together to see that we can actually begin fostering those skills very early on, even in the first level of language, because those skills that they are eventually going to need to be successful at that advanced AP level are just really good communication skills and language learning skills and cultural competence that is going to benefit them through every level of their language learning and beyond when they are out in the real world using their skills. So not looking at it as those skills are specific for really doing well at an advanced level, but let's look at how we can take those skills and plan backwards and make sure that students are actually engaging with them from early on and beginning even at the very first level. So what are the true benefits of focusing on this and looking at integrating a, I'm going to call it a pre-AP strategy, but a more scaffolded approach? So let's look at these benefits and the curriculum and how that can enhance our language program and our curriculum and our objectives. Because by focusing on these skills early on, we're providing students with a strong foundation in their language learning so that they will be well equipped eventually when they get to that higher level, and whether or not they follow that route, they'll still have the skills needed to communicate effectively and with confidence. In an upcoming episode, I'm actually going to spend the entire episode looking at vertical curriculum and how we can take topics and move them through each level that exists in our programs. So I'll leave that there for now, but be on the lookout for that episode coming up in a couple of weeks. But for now, let's look at some of these skills for building a strong language foundation. 
Foundation because this is going to pave that path for success and it's going to emphasize core language skills. So that means that we early on want to make sure that we're looking at interpersonal speaking, interpretive listening and reading, presentational speaking and writing. All of those are important at the advanced level, but we want to start doing them because it is pivotal for them to be doing that in our lower level classes as well. And though we often talk about comprehensible input, so that interpretive mode being of ultimate importance early on, we do want to start in on all the modes with students so they can start honing those skills early on. Because these skills are the foundation of language proficiency. And, you know, essentially they're going to serve as the building blocks for those advanced language studies. So we want to do things early on, like incorporate authentic resources, whether that's a news article or videos and podcasts. All of those things that are culturally rich are going to enrich language learning experiences. So we don't want to wait and say, oh, level three and above, that's when they can handle it. We want to begin exposing students to seeing that they can understand parts of it. They can use the language that they have to engage with a cultural aspect or with an authentic document, and they can do that early on. Now, granted, their output and what they will be able to understand will be more limited at the lower levels, but what we will be doing is building their confidence and seeing that they can do that, and building that confidence early on is really important. And ultimately, that is going to be a huge skill for them to have if they do continue on to those advanced levels. So students greatly benefit from exposure to real-world materials. You know, it's, it's providing them a glimpse into how language operates in authentic context. This is very likely already happening in your classroom. If you have a communicative classroom, that this is likely what is already happening. So hopefully, you're getting some reassurance that that what you're doing if you are teaching a level one, level two, or level three, that you are focusing on these critical skills for cultural competence and linguistic competence with your students. So yes, it is preparing them for those advanced levels and in AP, but we're also equipping them to go out in the real world with confidence and use their language. So when we look at things like AP themes, we can actually start taking those on early with our students. And the overarching theme about all of those AP themes, for me anyway, is looking at the idea of cultivating critical thinking with our students. So even at lower levels of proficiency, we can cultivate critical thinking skills that is attainable. So in our lower level classes, we can introduce basic analysis and synthesis abilities and skills. So for instance, we can encourage our students to analyze short text or compare different viewpoints on straightforward topics. They might not be able to really dive in. They don't have all of the language to do that yet, but they can start doing some simple comparisons and that's starting to really dive into the idea of critical thinking with them. And so questioning techniques play a pivotal role as well in promoting critical thinking. So we wanna make sure that we are posing thought provoking questions that urge students to dive deeper into a text's meaning or something that they're listening to or a story because all of that is nurturing thoughtful discussion and it's going to enhance their overall comprehension. So making sure that our questions are more open-ended and giving students an opportunity to synthesize and to analyze things rather than having just simple comprehension questions or true-false or something like that. So this idea of critical thinking skills is a bit of an overarching theme when it comes to the actual AP themes, but we can integrate those AP themes beginning very early on. And again, whether or not a student continues to that level, we can use the standards and what's published out there to prepare students for that level. We can use those in our classroom. You know, they're sort of tried and true and they're things that we're doing. So delaying the exploration of these particular themes until that advanced level isn't necessary. We can actually be taking them on early. So let's look at some of those advanced themes, those AP themes that students explore as a part of that particular program and see how we can actually 
likely be doing that in lower level classes. Again, not just to prepare them to do the advanced work, but also because it is useful for their language development. So the first one is the idea of beauty and aesthetics. So at lower proficiency levels, we can introduce discussions on topics like art and music and cultural expressions because we want to challenge students to describe things, to use their language to begin describing, whether that's a a famous painting using simple vocabulary and then compare their interpretations. But all of this is beginning to look at the language and the ideas and the critical thinking skills that will be needed to engage in that theme of beauty and aesthetics. And then there's another theme that is science and technology. So how can we take that on early on to prepare students? Well, basic science and technology-related vocabulary can be introduced beginning in the very early levels. We can have students read simplified news articles about technology and technological advancement and then discuss or give their opinions on the implications in the target language. Another of the themes is personal and public ideas identities. So exploring personal interests, which we do a lot of in our classrooms at the lower level. So exploring personal interests and identities is relevant at any proficiency level. So in a very sort of say straightforward about me presentation activity, students can introduce themselves and share about their likes, their dislikes, their preferences, their hobbies, their families, what their life is like. All of that is getting them comfortable talking about themselves and others in the target language. Again, doing it early on at their level, but giving them the confidence and the early language they need where they can actually perform and do well at the advanced levels. Another of the AP themes is families and communities. Family structure and communities are universal topics that can be discussed even with basic language skills. So we want to encourage students to create things like posters or Google Slides representing a community event or a family gathering. Again, just like talking about their personal identities here in discussing family and learning about families and seeing how that plays into different communities at their level starts building that language, that understanding, that cultural competence and confidence as they move on. Another of the themes is global challenges. So we can look at basic global challenges like environmental issues, although that's not really basic, but we can look at things like environmental issues, and those can begin in the lower level classes as well. You know, for instance, students can engage in dialogues discussing simple ways to contribute to maybe solving these challenges, looking at things like recycling, looking at images of recycling possibilities or infographics, again, at their level, and it'll get more complicated, and they will use the language more and be able to identify more things and synthesize more things as they go up in proficiency level. But we can begin by looking at things like recycling or weather in different areas and seeing how weather might be changing and climate change and bring all of those things into the classroom at their level that's giving them the idea that, yes, I can understand this stuff. I can actually engage with this topic with the language that I have, again, with the idea of building that confidence. And then the last theme I will look at is the theme of contemporary life that comes up at the AP level. So everyday life topics are relatable for all learners. So consider role play activities where students might simulate common situations like ordering food at a restaurant or using basic conversational phrases. A lot of that stuff is what we're doing in our classrooms already because students are living contemporary lives, building the confidence that they're using it there. So again, hopefully you're getting the idea that these are the things that are happening in your classroom. And you now have some talking points when you're saying, okay, but how does that prepare them for an AP level by doing this sort of activity? And now you have some ideas that you're giving them these topics to work with, with the language that they have at levels one and two and three, that's building their confidence and building that foundation of the language that they have and using it with confidence. 
So we also want to look at the idea of differentiation and inclusion. These are topics that should always be at the center of what we're doing in our classroom. So we just want to acknowledge the diverse learning needs in our classes. So even though we're taking on these topics, they may be done in different ways. They have to respond to different needs of different students. So we just want to make sure that we are implementing strategies that respond to the various learning styles and skill levels of our students. So even if the goal is they're going to go on to that advanced class AP level, even for those students that might not be doing that, by exposing them to these themes and giving them an opportunity to use the language that they have, they will be able to be a part of that process, even if they don't continue on to that level. They will have the benefit of having these topics and these skills introduced into their language classes. So one thing to look at is tiered assignments, because tiered assignments serve as an excellent approach to adapting tasks to different proficiency levels, and also they challenge learners while providing extra support for those that require it. So it is a similar assignment, but maybe something is done at novice high, something's done at intermediate low. So we can use that as an opportunity to respond to what our different students' needs are in the classroom. So really making sure that even though we are looking at providing advanced level language to go to that advanced level, we are still keeping in mind that we have students in our classroom that will benefit from that, but might need to be met at a different place on their language journey. So now that you have this whole idea of starting early with these themes and these skills, it is your turn to try this in the classroom, and hopefully you're doing a lot of it already and you're reassured, but just keep in mind these advantages of focusing on these AP skills or the advanced skills. They extend beyond just teaching advanced content. It lays a solid foundation for language learners when we start to engage with them early on. And by integrating these strategies and curriculum into our lower level classes, teachers, all of us, we are equipping students with the tools and the mindset that they'll need for success as they continue on with the language at higher levels, but also just being competent and confident as they go out and use the language in the real world. So try out these suggestions and tailor them to your unique classroom context and you will for sure be empowering your students to grow in proficiency and reach higher levels of cultural competence. So if reading is your thing, if you'd like a recap of all of this, I have a blog post that I recently wrote on this topic. So if you go to wlclassroom.com slash pre-AP, so wlclassroom.com slash pre-AP, also in the show notes, you can click there. But in the blog post, I outline all the topics that I just talked about so you can have it in one place if you would like to read it there. And also the coaching sessions that I've been doing have been really popular. So be sure to check out the show notes where you'll see a link to sign up for a leveling up coaching episode if that's something that you would be interested in. I would appreciate the opportunity to collaborate with you and talk about leveling up in your classroom. And there's also the link to sign up for Talking Points, which is my weekly email newsletter with tips and resources for language teaching. And there are also links to get in touch with me, as always, if you would like to work together. And we can do that in person in your school or remotely. So I will talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the World Language Classroom podcast. Be sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode. Let's keep the conversation going on social media. Connect with me on X, aka Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at WL Classroom. And for even more valuable resources, visit my website, wlclassroom.com, where you'll find over 300 blog posts about language teaching. So stay inspired, keep growing, and continue making a difference in your language classroom. 